You guys have been asking for it, man. And finally, I have delivered. Courtesy of ProWrestlingTees.com, you can now own the official WWE Off The Script t-shirt. And to get yours today, all you got to do is simply go to www.prowrestlingtees.com slash off the script and you now can represent the number one fucking source for all WWE right here on YouTube.com. www.prowrestlingtees.com slash WWE off the script and remember, hashtag Fuck those other guys, man. What is going on, guys? JD from New York here, and this is WWE Off The Script, episode number 85. This is part number three to close out your weekend, man. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning with me right here on... The number one fucking source right here on YouTube.com for everything WWE, man. Thank you guys for checking out Off The Script this weekend. Parts 1 and 2, if you did miss it, are linked down below in the description of this very video. If you guys also missed the podcast that is going to be ruling your sub boxes right here in the YWC, the YouTube wrestling community, it's out of nowhere with JD. And Joe Cronin, man. Episode 1 was on Wednesday. We're going to be live every Wednesday at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And a few of you have been asking me, JD, can you change the time? Blah, blah, blah. It's too late for me. I would love to, guys. I would love to do it earlier. But Joe and I work. You know, 11.30 is, I would say, a safe time where we are both available. I'd rather us be available at the same time every week. Then flip flop back, uh, flip flop back and forth on the times, and uh, it's going to be uploaded to YouTube immediately. Whether it's on his channel or my channel, you guys will get to see it. Might not be live, but you'll get to see the entertaining show regardless if it's live or not. All right. So every Wednesday, 11:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I think this week we're going to be doing it on my channel. We might simulcast from both channels. We don't know yet. We haven't discussed it, but it's going to be live every Wednesday at 11:30 p.m. Eastern Time. All right. Also, guys, let me get this shit out of the way. Social media, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Facebook, which I'm never on. I might as well fucking delete the page. Uh, follow JD all over social media if you want to keep up to date on what I do in this channel. My thoughts on WWE. Or if you just want to tweet with me during Monday Night Raw, pay-per-views, or whatever live special they got going on, man. We got NXT coming up, and I'm getting ready to watch the live MSG special right now. It's about 7 o'clock. My time here in New York City. I was going to do this recording after the show went off the air so we can discuss what happened, but I really don't give a fuck. I'm just going to have a few beers, watch it, enjoy it, tweet with you guys, and then probably hop back on Destiny for a little bit before I have to get up for work in the morning. So this video is going to contain no news. There's no news in this video whatsoever because WWE is stale. They got nothing going on exciting whatsoever, and that kind of bleeds in to the news and rumors and dirt sheets. There's nothing going on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a full Q&A right here on Off The Script. First time ever. We're going to go right to the mailbag. There's no fucking news. So let's get right into it, guys. We're going to start off on Twitter. You guys are interactive with me on Twitter. At JD from NY206. I told you to use the hashtag OTS85. We're going to start off with Nathan Fisher. He asks, once Ziggler and Rusev, uh, Rusev finish their soap opera, what superstars would you feud them up with? You know, this is a very difficult question. Number one, Rusev has to get back with Lana. Okay, Lana needs to be by his side. However they make that happen, you know, that needs to happen. She should be in a non-competitive role, a non-bumping role, being that she is recovering from a wrist injury. Ziggler needs to be a heel. I, I think Ziggler needs to go back to that Mr. Perfect-esque old-school HBK look where he threw Marty Jannetty through the barbershop window. I think he needs to be a fucking dick-like heel, a cocky heel, an arrogant heel, you know? 
Um, I, I think Ziggler needs to just switch it up. I think him as a face, we all wanted him to succeed as a face. We all want the WWE to give him the ball and run with it as a face. Never happened. I think it's time for Ziggler to make the switch. But flip-flopping them back and forth, I would I would involve Ziggler in uh, in the mid-card, man. Maybe, the, maybe for the United States Championship. Have a, a big run at that. You know, uh, the Intercontinental Championship. Rusev, I don't know what they do with Rusev, man. Honestly, I, he just seems like a lost puppy right now. He was one of the more dominating heels in WWE when he was the United States Champion. They feuded him with Cena. A lot of you guys think after that, his fucking push went right down the toilet. They had something great in Rusev. I don't know why they ruined it, man. He had the fucking Lana piece by his side, the beautiful Lana. They had, he had the managerial piece in Lana, and he was just a dominating heel, man. People hated him. The whole USA, you know, Russian thing was working. You know, the foreign fanatic here in the United States bragging about how great his country is, how he's demoralizing America and treating their American athletes as shit. That worked, man. That got him over. That got him heat, and they fucked it all up. So, uh, that's what needs to happen. I don't know who Rusev would feud with, but Ziggler, you know, he's got to be in the mid-card, man, right now. Uh, because I don't see him fighting for any world championships right now. That's just my take on that. Ryan on Twitter asks, Hashtag OTS85, what would you do if Kane booked... Uh, or if Kane, Jesus Christ, that, that, you see where my fucking mindset is. Uh, Kane is in this question. What would you do if WWE booked... A fatal four-way match between Mark Henry, Big Show, Ryback, and Kane. I wouldn't watch it. I wouldn't watch it, man. I'd take a nice couple of shots of NyQuil and call it an evening, man, before the match is even fucking announced for that pay-per-view. Or whatever, wherever the fuck they book it, man. Monday Night Raw, pay-per-view. God forbid if they ever do something like that, man. You really want to fucking fuck the fans out of something. You really want to spit in the face of every fan, fan that watches your product. You book that kind of match, man. That would be one of the worst matches I think I would ever fucking see in recent memory. Henry Big Show, Ryback, and Kane. Oh my fucking God. Uh, this one is from uh, Mr. Lepers, I'm going to say, because I don't know how to pronounce your first name, bro. Uh, at OTS85, he says, At JD from NY206, can you pick three potential winners for the Royal Rumble? 2016, a French guy who supports you, or from a French guy who supports you. Uh, three potential winners for the Royal Rumble, Brock Lesnar, I'm going to say Daniel Bryan, and you can never count out John Cena. This is from Hassan on Twitter. Who should be put over if Stone Cold versus Brock Lesnar happens at WrestleMania and why? Um, if Stone Cold is at WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, Texas, Arlington, Texas, wherever the fucking... Uh, city is in Texas at AT&T Stadium. I think if that match happened, Stone Cold Steve Austin would need to win it simply because I don't see Steve Austin wrestling again after that, being in front of the largest crowd ever for WWE pay-per-view. Stone Cold would win. He would completely retire from the business, go on doing what he's been doing, and then Brock Lesnar would come back and feud with whoever he feuds with next. But if Stone Cold doesn't wrestle at WrestleMania 32... I think this is it. The ship is sailed. You will never see Stone Cold in a WWE ring again. But if the match did happen, Stone Cold would definitely go over. This is from Mario on Twitter. What do you think about The Miz? Mike Work, in-ring ability, character. Miz is garbage, plain and simple. They had something special in The Miz when he was a heel. Now they turned him into a joke, and nobody gives a fuck about The Miz, man. He's decent in the ring. He's got uh, decent mic work. His character is something nobody cares about anymore. Because WWE has delegated him to the mid-card, and that's what I think about The Miz, man. I was a big Miz fan when he won his first WWE Championship, and I was laying in my bed watching my TV here. And I remember when The Miz cashed in his money in the bank, I jumped up, man. I was half asleep. I'm like, holy shit, it's about to happen. It was an exciting moment. I was a Miz fan for his run as WWE Champion. Wasn't the strongest book champion, but I was a fan nonetheless because he was an underdog. When nobody ever thought they'd see The Miz as WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But, right now, nobody gives a fuck. Uh, so The Miz right now, pretty much going to be delegated to that role of, you know, Miz TV, and a mid-card jobber, and a, you know, somewhat semi-comedy act. He's never gonna be, you know, anything but that. So, The Miz, I was a fan now, current day Miz, not so much, really can't stand what he's doing with the WWE and his role in the WWE. This is from Jay on Twitter. What do you hate most about WWE fans? 
This is an easy answer. The fact that they're so fucking gullible, man. They take what WWE does. And I'm talking about the fans who attend. You know, the people that don't watch the product every day like we do. You know, they attend these shows. They watch Monday Night Raw. And they just eat up whatever WWE is doing, man. Afraid to speak out about the product and what they're doing wrong and what they hate about it. Us on the internet side of things, we're very vocal, man. We want our voice to be heard. You know, we think we know better than anybody. So there's two sides to the fucking fence here. But what I hate most about WWE fans, the non-casuals, the people that don't want that don't watch every day, the fact that they're fucking gullible and they'll take whatever shit WWE is throwing at them and absolutely agree with it. I fucking can't stand that. All right? This is from Liam Smiley on Twitter. Uh, he asks... Uh, if and when the Hardy Boys come back, do you think WWE will give them a feud with the Dudleys for the titles or a title run? Absolutely, on both accounts. They will be feuding with the Dudleys, and they will be right back in the tag team title uh, picture. So that was an easy one. Thank you, Liam, for the question. This is from Aaron on Twitter. I honestly feel like the two best wrestling promotions right now are both NXT and Ring of Honor. Would you agree with that? I would probably agree with you with NXT being number one right now because I love the work that Triple H and Stephanie and everybody else involved with NXT is doing. It's just old school. It's got that great feel to it. Excellent wrestling. You, you get to see all the young green talent down there as you watch them month after month, week after week. You see them developing. And, and these are the guys that we're going to be watching when we're continuing to watch the product 5, 10, 15 years from now. Guys like... Uh, Apollo Crews and Tyler Breeze and Hideo Itami, Finn Balor, you know, so I love what NXT is doing. I think NXT right now is the number one promotion in the United States. This is from Saraya on Twitter. Uh, she asks, do you see Randy Orton winning the IC title again in the next five years? Hashtag OTS off the, uh, hashtag OTS 85. Um, no, I, I don't see Randy Orton winning the IC title, but I will say this, I think to book the IC title and make it strong again, people like Randy Orton do need a run with the IC title. I think Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens would be a fabulous Intercontinental Championship feud, and it's something that would get Kevin Owens over if he is successful in taking down Randy Orton. I think guys like Randy Orton, I think guys like Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, you know, they got Kevin Owens right now with Sami Zayn coming back. Those kind of guys. You need at least one big guy. You know, you take what John Cena is doing with the United States Championship and you apply that to the to the Intercontinental Championship, you got the same thing, man. That's why they initially gave it to Daniel Bryan. What John Cena is doing with the United States Championship, they had the same idea with Daniel Bryan holding the IC title, but he went down with injury. But you get my point. Guys like Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan, those guys need to hold on to mid-card titles because... The WWE has diminished and devalued these titles so much in the past that it's going to need a guy like Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan to, you know, bring people's awareness back to those specific titles. Oh, shit, Daniel Bryan's holding the title. Oh, shit, Daniel Bryan's defending the title on a weekly basis. Oh, shit, Daniel Bryan's a fighting champion. It's going to bring instant prestige and credibility back to those specific championships, okay? That was everything on Twitter, guys. Let's go to the YouTube comments here. Um, we're going to start off with Barry Shitpeas. Yes, this is a real comment, folks. Barry Shitpeas. He asks, JD, do you see Dean Ambrose ever getting a proper push? And also, who do you see taking the U.S. title off John Cena? I would like to see a Neville or a Cesaro get that push. Plus, when will the Dumb Divas revolution end? Uh, I don't think Dean Ambrose is ever going to get a proper push because I believe WWE doesn't know what it has in Dean Ambrose. Actually, with the way Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose are looking great as a tag team or as a unit, I would put them in the tag team division, man. Give them a run with the tag team championships. I think they could add a hell of a lot of credibility and a lot of competition to that tag team division, all right? Because Roman Reigns is not there yet. They're both young enough where they can be a tag team for a couple of years and then maybe split off. But I would love to see them as a tag team, man. Can you imagine the Shield, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose versus the Hardys if they come back? The Shield versus the Dudleys? The Shield versus a New Day? Got a lot of nice, interesting matchups there. Who do I see taking the U.S. title off? John Cena? Tough to say, man. I would love to see a Neville. I would love to see a Cesaro. You know, I would love to see maybe a Finn Balor come up. Uh, that one is an open-ended question. It could be literally anybody. But if John Cena is building up the United States Championship, when and if that does happen... Uh, it's going to be a big moment, so I would definitely keep the United States Championship on John Cena right now because the longer he holds it, 
that one loss when he does pass that torch is going to be a significant moment. And uh, plus, when will the Divas Revolution end? It already ended to me, bro. After that one week when Stephanie McMahon announced all those NXT Divas, or NXT women, I should say, onto the main roster, that one week, they went right back to the same bullshit. That one week ended the Divas Revolution to me. So they got a lot of work if they definitely want to call it a revolution. And if you want to see a revolution, just watch the women down in NXT, man. They're continuing to give us great matches, even though both uh, Charlotte, Becky, uh, both, I should say, all three. Charlotte, Becky, and Sasha are now on the main roster. All right, what else we got here? What else we got here? We got Robert Diaz on YouTube. JD, what do you think of WWE? What, what would you think if WWE went to every other month pay-per-view, cut out all these B-level shows, and keep your core ones like Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, etc., and bring back King of the Ring, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and finish the year off with Night of Champions? I think it would give... WWE creative more time to write storylines and give the product a fresh look. This would never happen, and for the simple reason of it would be money lost to WWE. But I do think WWE needs to revamp the pay-per-view calendar. I would cut out all these B-level gimmick pay-per-views like Hell in a Cell. I would cut out Money in the Bank. I would cut out, uh, what else they got, TLC. Those specific pay-per-views, you're not, you're not going to build a pay-per-view around a specific match, man. Pay-per-view should be built around a feud going into the pay-per-view. You need to have Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, King of the Ring, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series as your big five. If you want to make another one that's very, very important during the year, have it be Night of Champions and treat it like a Night of Champions. I would bring King of the Ring back in June. I would bring Great American Bash back in July. SummerSlam in August, okay? You have Night of Champions in September. October, you would have Halloween Havoc. November, you would have Survivor Series. December, you got the fucking copyrights. Give us Starcade in December, man. Make these pay-per-views must-see. Every year, WWE treats their pay-per-view calendar like shit. I don't understand it. And then WWE can give us these special WWE Network-only shows, man. Elimination Chamber. Put money in, the ba money in the Bank back at WrestleMania. Fuck this Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, man. These throwaway matches and these throwaway fucking pay-per-views. You know, that's what they need to do. They need to revamp the pay-per-view calendar, bring back King of the Ring, bring back Halloween Havoc. If you don't like Survivor Series, give War Games a shot in November, man. And put Money in the Bank back at WrestleMania. Fuck everything else. That's what I would do. That's the answer to that question, okay? What else do we got here, man? What else do we got here? This is from Adam Phillip. Do you think someone in the early 90s, IRS's wife, had an affair with Tatanka, which resulted in Bo Dallas? I don't know what kind of question is that, man. I haven't read anywhere where IRS's uh, wife had an affair with Tatanka, uh, which resulted in Bo Dallas. I don't know whether that's a troll or if you really read that somewhere, but uh, thank you, Adam Phillip. Okay. What else do we got here? What else do we got here? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going down, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. This is from Robert Diaz. JD, what do you think of an NXT Invasion script against WWE? Something like that, for, uh, maybe something like that to refresh Monday Night Raw? No, absolutely not. They need to be separate entities, all right? Uh, what else do we got here? What else do we got here? Um, there was more, there was more questions on Twitter, actually. There was more questions on Twitter. Uh, this is from Jeffrey Thomas. JD, do you think John Cena will ever be the WWE champion once again? Absolutely. Uh, I can definitely see a 16-time reign. He's only 38 years old, and I can definitely see uh, John Cena breaking that record. Ric Flair's record will be broken uh, sometime within the next uh, three to five years without question, okay? If The Undertaker won the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 32, how would you book his title defenses till SummerSlam or until WrestleMania 33? Do you think we will see Brock Lesnar versus The Rock or Stone Cold anytime soon? Um, well, the ultimate scenario that I had, and this was actually an original Jim Ross idea, and I just kind of ran with it. Uh, WWE doesn't like tournaments, but I... I said if The Undertaker was really going to retire at WrestleMania 32, which would be the ideal place for a lot of veterans to retire, Stone Cold, The Undertaker, Sting. If The Undertaker won the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 32, if he was to go against whoever the champion may be, you know, he could retire the next night on Raw, and we can have a WWE Championship tournament, okay? And the WWE can drag this out. You can have qualifying matches, you have qualifying matches to get into the tournament because this is a big fucking deal. You're going to crown a new champion who's going to hold the title for months and months and months, okay? 
have qualifying matches to get in there, all right? You would fill out a field of 16. You got 16 guys vying for the championship, all right? Every match on Monday Night Raw would have significant importance. Every fucking match on that three-hour show. You would have a field laid out of 16. Now, however long that takes, it might take a Monday Night Raw, it might take two Monday Night Raws, three Monday Night Raws, but you would make every fucking match interesting with something behind it, with a meaning behind it, all right? You would have The Undertaker va vacate the belt, si a field of 16, and you would book it until then, all right? And the finals would be on a pay-per-view, all right? And you would crown a champion, whether that's uh, during the summer or if you want to prolong it a little bit, wherever that happens, man. That's open-ended, but that that's what I would do, all right? Do I see Brock Lesnar versus The Rock or Stone Cold anytime soon? No. I think Brock Lesnar is going to win the Royal Rumble, and I think Seth Rollins is going to hold the title to WrestleMania, and then those two are going to meet, and Brock Lesnar is going to defeat Seth Rollins and recapture the WWE Championship. That's just what I think is going to happen. Hey, JD, this is from Pamela. Do you think, uh, did you hear the rumor that Sasha Banks was slated to get a title shot at the Survivor Series? It was on some site, The Inquisitor. The Inquisitor is nothing but tabloid trash. Do not believe anything that they say. I get my rumors from Dave Meltzer and WrestleZone and a lot of other uh, sources, two of which that I am paid, uh, that I uh, that I have paid subscriptions to. So, you know, even those paid subscriptions, man, they don't really know the full details of what's going on. But um, I give you guys actually legit information that could possibly happen. And I always say take things with a grain of salt. But I do think Sasha Banks uh, should get a, a shot at the title. I think Sasha Banks versus Charlotte uh, is a money feud. And I even brought up in my WrestleMania 32 news and rumors on Off the Script for part one this weekend, number 85. I'd say Sasha, Charlotte, Becky, and Bailey in a fatal four-way four, four horsewoman woman match at WrestleMania for the in a, for the WWE Divas Championship. That's what I that's what I think should happen, and that would be fucking unbelievable if it did happen. This is from Garganzor, man. What's up, bro? Uh, he says he posted a question on yesterday's video, but he will post it again with the way Monday Night Raw. Uh, and WWE has been handled over the past few years. If another promotion received a TV deal on Monday nights, not necessarily for three or even a two-hour show, do you think it would at least alarm WWE for the better? Me personally, I'd have nothing to lose and entertainment to gain switching channels. My answer to this question is WWE would be alarmed, okay? And it would have to be the right promotion. The only promotion out of everything that's in the United States right now that would actually do good on Monday nights would probably be Ring of Honor. All right? I think Ring of Honor for, fuck, a one-hour show during that 9 to 10 o'clock hour, I think would worry WWE. I think that one-hour show, if Ring of Honor was on Monday night, would alarm WWE. And for that one hour, I'd see WWE booking its strongest hour instead of going into Monday Night Raw like we see every week with bullshit on the third hour. Half of the time, I'm falling asleep during the, dur uh, during the third hour because it's too fucking long. But I do think any kind of competition on Monday night would serve WWE better. Competition always makes everybody better. That's why Monday Night Raw was so great during the Attitude Era when competing with Monday Nitro. Because they knew Nitro was on from, uh, from 8 to 11. They had three hours. They had one extra hour on Monday Night Raw. WWE did everything in its power to make Monday Night Raw must-see each and every week, man competition is great and i wish we had another promotion instead of wwe pretty much swallowing everything up in the united states all right uh jd do you think dean ambrose would get a big push and become wwe champion no i think dean ambrose is mid card for life the way current wwe is booking him right now of all your years watching professional wrestling this is from edge 0626 of all your years watching professional wrestling what has been your favorite entrances to watch and what have been your favorite entrance themes? My favorite entrance of all time is The Undertaker. Uh, I love Finn Balor's entrance right now. I think Baron Corbin has a great fucking entrance. Um, that's pretty much it, man. My favorite themes of all time, uh, you gotta have The Undertaker, the original Undertaker theme, not this, uh, not the, the recent one. Stone Cold's theme, HBK's theme, sung by Sensational Sherry. Uh, I love The Ultimate Warrior's theme. Current WWE superstars right now. I love Sami Zayn's theme. I love uh, Finn Balor's theme right now. His, his is probably my favorite theme song right now. I'd have to say Finn Balor. Uh, I loved Drew McIntyre's theme song when he was in WWE. I love Tyler Breeze's entrance right now. He's got that old school model Rick Martel you know, look. He's got that flamboyance to him. And he's just taken that and he's modernized it. 
Finn Balor's got a great entrance. Those are the those are the kind of entrances I like, man. That entrances that give you fucking eye opening, uh, you know, uh, reactions and. You get the chills when you watch those kind of entrances, man. But nothing ever is going to beat The Undertaker, man. The original Undertaker, you know, the the old school Undertaker, man, when he was there, when he first came out. Fucking, the lights never went out. They started adding that shit as he went on. But he came out, the gong went off, and the crowd went fucking dead silent. You were like, what the fuck, man? Who is this motherfucker? He had that presence about him, man. I loved it. Everything about The Undertaker back when he first debuted and he, you know, he went on years and years after that. Everything just became just unbelievable with The Undertaker. So he's got to be my favorite of all time. But I uh, hope, hope that answered your question, man. All right, as far as talent goes, hopefully a new generation can begin. Now, this is not a question. Sorry about that. Um, I thought that was a question. This is from South Nicosia. Do you think Vince eventually will succeed to bring 108 fans to, into AT&T Stadium with the right card? Yes. Do you think CM Punk will ever return to the WWE? Yes. It's a matter of when, not if, with CM Punk. This is from Show Stealer. Do you think WWE will ever do a Shield triple threat? I don't know, uh, but I would definitely like to see that for sure. This is from Peyton on YouTube. Do you think the Undertaker versus Sting would ever happen, just not at WrestleMania? The only place for that match to happen is at WrestleMania. All right. Hey, JD, what's up, bro? This is from Izzy. Do you see Finn Balor keeping his demon character when he goes to the main roster? Yes. Uh, Vince will not change that and make it more childlike. I think uh, that is a special uh, entrance when Finn Balor's on pay-per-view or a major event. He comes out usually with uh, the title right now down at NXT. No face paint and a black leather jacket. I think Finn Balor has the look. No homo. I think Finn Balor has the qualities and the qualifications and the in-ring skill to be a successor to John Cena. But he's 34 years old, so if WWE wants that to have happen, they got Finn Balor. I think he's a ideal candidate to take John Cena's spot. He's got the look. He's got the in-ring skill. He could be the face of the company. But WWE has to strike while the iron is hot with Finn Balor, being that he's 34 years old. But the Demon character will definitely be something he does on the main roster when it's important during a pay-per-view, during a big, big match. That will never go away. That's what makes Finn Balor's uh, character interesting and engaging, okay? If you were to start your own wrestling company, this is from Jacob. How would you start it off uh, to make it get bigger than WWE? I'm not going to answer this question because nothing will ever be bigger than WWE, okay? Can't be. No matter how much talent I got, no matter how much money I got, you're never going to be bigger than WWE. Why? Because WWE is a household name and they probably will be around forever, okay? This is from Rab's Games. Do you think that they will unify the U.S. and I.C. titles? No. No reason, no, no reason to. I think the U.S. and I.C. titles are best separate from each other. Okay. What else do we got here? What else do we got here going on? This is from Champion Q 45 He's got two questions for me. I don't understand why people are so hyped about Bailey from NXT. Already, I don't like your question, bro. Her character to me is very unoriginal, or maybe it's because she looks like a 15-year-old child. I do think that she is a good wrestler, though. Do you think she is going to become the next female John Cena? Yes, without question. There were, there were reports going around that Bayley is actually one of the more popular divas on the roster, both NXT and Monday Night Raw combined. One higher up in WWE said that if Bayley was on the main roster, she would be granting just as much make-a-wishes than John Cena. Bayley is money, period. And number two, I have been watching on the WWE Network ECW Hardcore TV replays of the WWE in the Attitude Era and some WWE shows. Surprisingly, I don't need any NyQuil. Yes, because that's when wrestling was good. I can't help but notice the passion people had for wrestling back then. In today's WWE, I find myself either falling asleep or watching Monday Night Football. My question is, where do you see the WWE house shows, Raw and SmackDown, in the next 10 years? Because of the way things are looking, I don't see them having a TV deal anymore. WWE will always have a TV deal because they are the number one promotion in the United States. They will never let that happen. What they do need to have happen is they need to have more consistency with the shows. Monday Night Raw needs to be built specifically to give us quality television every Monday night like it did back in the day. You can't have it be three hours. Two hours is enough. That's the, that's the deal that they signed with NBC Universal because WWE got more money out of it. It's all political. It's all money. That's, that's what happens with these big promotions and these big networks, okay? SmackDown needs to be rebuilt, okay? I don't know uh, anybody that watches SmackDown and that's genuinely interested in SmackDown. 
Uh, I think SmackDown needs a new set. I think Monday Night Raw needs a new set as well. It's just fucking stale and dated. Uh, I think SmackDown needs to have something engaging each and every week. Daniel Bryan brought up the idea of having the IC title be the main title on SmackDown, but then that would get people talking about a split roster, and you don't need a split roster. All right, WWE can barely book a three-hour Raw. They're going to book two shows with a split roster? Fuck out of here, man. It's never going to happen. But uh, in the next 10 years, I think WWE is going to be, be in a better place simply because of who they got down in NXT. And all those guys at that time will definitely be a mainstay on the WWE roster. Will Vince McMahon be around in the next 10 years? I don't know. Will Kevin Dunn be around in the next 10 years? I don't know. But I've always said it, and God forbid anything happens because I don't want anything to happen to Vince McMahon. I just wish he would fucking open up and listen and realize what's going on. But when Triple H takes over, I have high, high, high hopes in Triple H taking over WWE and giving us a product that all the fans have been craving for for a very, very long time. JD from Jonathan, do you see Goldberg coming back to the WWE and how would I book him? Goldberg is not coming back to the WWE. If he doesn't, if not, if he doesn't come back during WrestleMania 32, I don't see him ever coming back, period, okay? What is going on here, man? What else we got? What else do we got? Do you think John Cena will drop the belt at Hell in a Cell? This is from James Houston. No, I think John Cena will hold on to the United States Championship for a very, very long time. I think he's the only one that is capable of holding it and bringing prestige back to that title. What else do we got? What else do we got? Uh, this is from Mega Gatto. Hey, JD, over the years, there have been some great factions. My personal favorite is Evolution. Which is your favorite faction? Which two factions in any era in their prime would you like to see in a match? My favorite faction of all time has to be the uh, D-Generation X. And I would love to see D-Generation X versus The Shield. So uh, you can pick any three guys of D-Generation X from the Attitude Era. You know, take exactly how they were in the Attitude Era. You could be Triple H, Shawn Michaels, or, or uh, X-Pac. Or you can have the New Age Outlaws and X-Pac versus... Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose when they were first in the Shield, man. I think that would be a fucking excellent match. But D-Generation X, when they when they were running rampant on Monday Night Raw, that was my favorite faction of all time. What is my opinion on Dean Ambrose winning the Royal Rumble and main eventing WrestleMania versus Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns? Not happening. Just leave it at that. It's not happening, all right? And that's pretty much it, guys. That is everything. We ran through a lot of questions today. That is everything, man, right here on Off The Script. Hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. There was no news, I'm sorry about that, but if I don't have news, I'm not going to report anything that's false, or I'm not going to go out there and find something that's, you know, completely outlandish. I'm going to give you guys credible information, credible news sources, credible news articles that get everybody engaged in discussion, man. All right, but uh, this is Off The Script. Thank you guys for watching part three of the number one fucking source right here on YouTube.com for everything WWE. I'll hopefully, I'll hopefully be back with another Monday Night Raw review uh, following tomorrow's show, I'll be back with Joe Cronin on Wednesday, uh, right after NXT, actually. I completely forgot about NXT. Uh, we'll be live after my review on NXT. We'll, we'll discuss that. There's a lot of things we're going to go over on Out of Nowhere. Live Wednesdays, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time in your sub boxes, JD and Joe Cronin. Uh, show my sponsors some love, guys. Um, we got WrestleCrate.com, the number one subscription uh, service delivered right to your front door. Use the code JDSENTME. For an instant 10% off, that's www.russellcrate.com. And on Twitter, at WrestleCrates, we got Joe Cronin Show. Everything you need for the podcast and his channel linked down below. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com. If you guys want to support the show through a t-shirt sale, you can always do that. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WWE off the script. Or if you simply just want to donate to the show, my PayPal link is linked down below as well. And that's it, guys. That's all I got. Off the script, 85, done. I'll be back on Monday, hopefully, with a Monday Night Raw review and back right behind this microphone on Off the Script, 86. This is JD. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all next week for more great WWE content, man. This is JD. I'll talk to you guys later.